let's look at the basic installation of Puppet, the configuration management software. Puppet is a nice service that allows you to control your client machines and to control the configurations on them, whether our services are installed and on and off. What it requires is a Puppet Master and a, an agent. Normally, Puppet requires two gigabytes of memory and we are going to be running with one gigabyte, so we're going to be needing to tell it that we're using one gigabyte instead. Um, I have two machines, server.example.com and client.example.com. Obviously, if you were doing it yourself, you would have your own machine names. Puppet uses TCP port 8140 for communications, so we're going to need to use that as well. All right, so let's start with installation. The easiest way is to start with the RPM command RPM IVH and tell the path to the Puppet software HTTPS and is yum yum dot puppet labs dot com slash puppet labs dash release dash yell dash seven dot no arch dot rpm and if I type this correctly it should download and install the puppet repository which will allow me to then install my puppet stuff so let's figure out what we have put a yum search puppet we can see which packages are now available from this rpm repository all right, we should have the Puppet server, and that's what we're going to want to install. So we want Puppet, Puppet server, and get that on our server machine. So yum install Puppet server. On the enterprise version, this is the open source version, but on the enterprise version, you can also have things like uh, Puppet Firewall D, which is nice because it takes care of your firewall for you. We're going to go ahead and manually configure on firewall. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So I accept these packages, install all this. We need to have Ruby because Puppet uses Ruby quite heavily. And then we'll be ready to go. So let's skip ahead a bit. All right, now the installation of Puppet is complete. And I want to go and start configuring them. So I want to go to the etc puppet directory and take a look around. There is a file called puppet.conf, and this is the most important file for what we're doing. In the very beginning, we're going to configure that puppet.conf. And in this file, we want to tell it information about our server. So there are a couple of sections. There's the main section, the agent section. We're going to the main section. We're going to tell it that our DNS alt names are going to be server example.com or just server. So this is important because my server is not called Puppet. The default name is to be called Puppet and I'm not using that. Also I'm going to tell it my server is server.example.com. All right, that's so it will know if it says run as an agent who to talk to. And I need to put the server line on the client, but not the alternate DNS, the DNS all names. All right, so that takes care of our puppet.com file. We exit out of that. As I mentioned before, we have a memory problem. So we don't have enough memory we need to go and configure that. So I go to the etc directory and there is a sysconfig directory and right in here we're going to edit the puppet server file. And right here we can see under the java args we can see that it is 2g which means it wants 2 gigabytes. We really don't want to provide that. We're going to give it 512m instead which as you might guess is 512 megabytes. 
that will make it so we can start even without the two gigabytes of free memory that's required normally. All right, at this point, we are pretty much ready to start our server if we wanted to, but I want to go and create a firewall rule. So you can go into the uh, user lib firewall D services directory. And in this directory, you can see all of the services that are used for the firewall. You can turn off any one of these services, turn them on. We're going to copy one of these. So we'll copy our ssh.xml file and we will call it puppetmaster.xml. And then we're going to, go and to edit that file because we really want it to be a puppet master. And we'll take out this SSH stuff. So we'll delete the whole description. And then we will tell it that it is the puppet master. So puppet master server. As I mentioned before, it operates on port 8140. TCP 8140, and for short, we'll just call this Puppet Master. All right, so there we go. Shortened Puppet, Mal Puppet Master file. The firewall doesn't know this file exists right now, so I need to restart the firewall just so I can be clear. So I do system CTL restart firewall D. And now I can add the Puppet Master service to the firewall. So do firewall cmd add service equals Puppet Master. And I'm also going to add it to my permanent rules so that on boot time, when the firewall restarts, then the Puppet Master service firewall service will be there. So I can check out my services with my firewall CMD list all. And I can see that my Puppet Master service is listed right here. Okay, now the firewall is taken care of, but the server is still not running. So I need to start the service. Go back to my main directory, clear the screen. And here we go. I will do system CTL start Puppet server. So when you try starting a puppet server for the first time, it does tend to take a little bit of time. Normally you can wait for two to three minutes. And while it's doing this, it's going to be creating rules and other information, um, I guess certificates. So we just want to skip ahead a bit. Okay, the puppet server has finally started. It took me a couple minutes. Now I'm going to enable it so that the service will start automatically boot time. So I do that with my system CTL enable puppet server command. And now Smog Link's created. It is ready to start automatically at boot time. Okay. Right now I should have a certificate from myself. So I can type in puppet cert list all and I should see that there is a certificate from myself but there is nothing from the client because the client has not been configured so it's time to jump over to the client and start configuring the client here we are on the client machine the client now needs to install the puppet software so first it needs to install the repository so you rpm minus ibh as HTTPS again yum.puppetlabs.com slash puppetlabs dash release dash el dash seven dot no arch dot rpm and if I type this correctly it should install and it appears I had typed it correctly this time, instead of installing the Puppet server, I'm going to install the Puppet software. So yum install Puppet. 
and the puppet server will then, or the puppet client then downloads. And once it's downloaded, I want to configure the client so it knows where the server is because normally it won't talk to the server. It'll assume the server's name is puppet, which it's not because it is server.example.com. And you would have your own name for your servers, which would probably not be server.example.com. All right. So we are almost done. Let's skip ahead a bit. All right. My puppet agent has now been installed and I'm ready to configure it. So the configuration is once again in the etc puppet directory. You can see there is a puppet.com file. So the nano on puppet.conf. And down here in the agent section, I am going to configure, well, actually, in the main section, I'll configure the server. But server is server.example.com. And in the agent section, I want my puppet agent to synchronize more often than it normally does. Normally, it will synchronize every 30 minutes, and I wanted to go a little bit faster. So I'll do a run interval equal to 300. So that's every five minutes. So if something happens, I want configuration changes to get pulled every five minutes. Okay. And I have new mail. Nothing to worry about. Okay. At this point, I can try connecting to the server. I will not be successful, but I can try anyway. So I'll do puppet agent test. So when I run this command, it creates its own certificates, and then it's going to try communicating with the server. The server says, I don't really know who you are, so I won't talk to you. So let's go back to the server now. The server knows about this client, and if I look at the cert list, I can see that there is a cert here. The cert has not been accepted, so I want to accept the cert. So I'll do puppet cert all sign. And then I sign the cert, and then the client should be able to communicate with me now. Okay, so I go right to the client machine. I try running again, and this time it should be more successful. And it says, we're good to go. All right. Okay, but there's nothing there on the server. I want the client to be running normally. Um, well, I'll start the service later. First, I wanted to go over to the server and make some configurations so we can see what's going on. Oh, we can make some changes. So in the etc directory, etc puppet, you can see that there was the puppet.com file, which we messed with earlier. And there's also this manifest directory. So let's go into the manifest. In here, we can create configuration files. What we want to do is start with a site.pp file. This will be read for everything. So nano site.pp. All right, in this, we are going to do uh, something that everybody gets. So all nodes stuff. So what do we get? Well, let's have a file that they all get. We're going to update their message of the day. The etc motd file and this file we're going to tell the path is going to be put in the etc directory as oops, etc motd and the contents of this file, content, is going to be just a hello puppet. If we wanted to add a new line, we could do that. Just put it right here. And it's kind of ugly, but we'll just keep it like this. This way there's no new line. All right, so then it should be able to send the message of the day over to the client. We're also going to add some more to it. We want to have some specific configurations for the client. So our client name is, well, client. So client dot 
example.com and the configurations for this node right here, we want to have a package declaration. And if you want to know about more resource types, you can go do Google search for puppet resource types. But here we go, this package. We want to have the post fix package install. So we'll do ensure and we're going to do install. And we can add more options in there if we wanted, but we're not going to worry about it. All right, so let's go ahead and copy this thing right here. And we'll uncopy it, uncut it. And now we have another copy, and we're going to change this to nmap. Because we want to ensure that nmap is installed as well. Now, Postfix is installed by default on CentOS 7 machines, which one I'm using. nmap is not installed by default, so we can go and verify and check these things. I also want to make sure that the Postfix for service is running. If you're running some kind of a um, web server, mail server, you might want to make sure your service is running. And so you could go in and configure this with a service definition to ensure that it is running. All right, so here we have my node. It's all ready to go. And this would be my single node information. So this is only for the example, the, or client.example.com. If I wanted to put more in here, I could do a add extra nodes right here on the same line or a separate node definitions. So now I'm out of there. Now let's go to the client and we'll check some stuff. First of all, the client um, does have POSIX running. So you use system or system CTL status post fix. We can see that post fix is active and running. We want to shut it down just so we can test it. So we'll do a stop. And then we will go ahead and do our puppet agent test. Now, the things that should change is it should go and change the message of the day to be hello puppet. It should also change so it installs um, nmap. And then it should start up the postfix service. So let's take a look and see what happened. If we cat out our etc MOTD, we can see it says hello puppet, that's good. The nmap, now nmap has been installed, so that's good. And let's see if postfix is running. System CTL status postfix. We can see that it is active and running again. Now, if we want this to happen every five minutes, like I said in the running interval, I have to have the puppet service running. So I will do a system CTL start. And then I'll do a system CTL enable puppet so it'll start on boot time. And now I have both a client and a server configured. Uh, I don't need to run the test anymore because the Puppet software is running. However, if I run the test again, it will say that nothing has really changed and is ready to go. And that's it for the basic Puppet configuration.